G'day guys, how are you? And welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can easily use an Xbox 360 controller in your classic Windows application program using Visual C Sharp. So let's begin. So the very first thing we want to do is we just want to go to the top left hand corner and go to New Project. Once you clicked on that, we just want to go to Classic Desktop, make sure you've got Visual C Sharp selected and go to Windows Form Application. Once you see the screen, what you want to do now is you can either press F7 or like me, you can right click and go to view code. Once that's done, you'll see this window here. And what I'm going to do quickly now is I'm just going to create the class object. And this is what um, is going to be our rectangle. And I'm going to use the Xbox controllers buttons to control the rectangle. So I'm going to move the rectangle around on the screen. But before I do that, I do need to create a class. You don't necessarily need to do one in a class. Um, but I much prefer it because I just think it's a lot neater and you have more control and it's just yeah a lot nicer code So I'm going to quickly fast forward this as you can see because this video isn't about creating a class It is about obviously getting the Xbox 360's controller to work in a classic desktop application Okay, so once that's done, as you can see now, I've got a blue square or rectangle, as it's called, um, that's successfully printed to the screen. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly show you that if I go to using Windows, I don't have any access to the Windows Universal um, libraries, of course, because this is a standard desktop application. So as you can see there, if I go to Reference Manager, there is nothing in there to do with Windows Universal. So what I need to do is I need to go to Solution Manager, go to my project, right click on it and go to Unload Project. Now what you need to do is right click on that same object and go to edit. This is where you're going to find all the information, you know, such as the frameworks, um, warning levels, uh, what sort of application it is, the namespace, you know, all that sort of stuff. So what I need to do now is I'm just going to go underneath properties and I'm going to type in target platform version and just there I'm going to type in 10.0 if you did want to target Windows 8 or 8.1 then you could simply put you know 8.0 or 8.1 so save it and then go to reload project from where you unloaded it so I'm just going to open up the Windows forum again we're going to go back to properties and I'm going to select add a reference and as you can see now I've got my universal Windows libraries there that I can now choose from so just there I'm selecting Windows gaming and I'm pressing OK I need to add one more DLL for this to work. So I'm just going to go to Browse, and I've got the one there already that I used previously, but I'm going to show you the location of it. So it's Programs 86, Reference Assembly, then you want to go to Microsoft, go to Framework, go to .NET Core, then go to 4.5.1, and select the System Runtime .Windows Runtime .DLL. Make sure the box is ticked and press OK. So now I'm going to show you how we can get our application to talk to the controller. So I'm going to import the library now that we've just added in from the reference called Using Windows Gaming Import. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in Gamepad and I'm going to call this one Controller. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up a few events that the gamepad has, such as gamepad add and gamepad remove. So what this is going to do is each time the controller is inserted into the computer, it's going to trigger this event. And each time the controller has been removed from the computer, it's going to trigger another event. But first what I need to do is I want to display on the output window here just what's happening. I don't want the sort of um, the user to see what events are being occurred when they do something. I just want this for debugging purposes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to create a, a private async task. I'm going to call it log, and I've created a parameter there with the word text in there. Now I'm going to run this task here, which is going to, you know, async or synchronize, however you want to say it. And each time this is called, it's going to write a message to the output window. And in this case, we're just going to put date time dot now to short date and exactly what was 
written there will come from the text parameter that we created above there. And just actually quickly thinking, we don't even need a sync. All we need to do is input system diagnostics, as you can see there. That way it will print to the output window. And we just want the task to wait. So we're just going to simply put await t. So once the task t has been completed, then the program will move on. But if it hasn't completed, it's obviously not going to do anything. So now what I can do is put private async, await, log, controller added, and the same for the removed, except I'm going to put controller removed. So right now I have a Xbox 360 controller in my computer, and as you can see the controller has been added. It's right there. If I was to unplug it, it would pop up with controller removed. However, my desktop is on the floor and I just can't get to it from here. And just to make it make more sense, I've just put here two short time string. Obviously the date is not going to really matter in the end. It's more the time since, yeah. So as you can see at 107 the controller was added. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a quick timer. So timer t equals new timer. Of course you could drag the timer object from the toolbox into the application, but I much prefer to programmatically add it. I'm going to tell it to update every second. I'm going to start it and I'm going to go to timer or t.tick. So this every time the tick um, event happens, uh, I want it to read what the controller is doing. So in this case, I'm going to say if gamepad.gamepads.count is more than one. So if there's more than one controller uh, inserted into a USB or on the system, then controller gamepad dot gamepads dot first. So this controller object that I create at the top there is going to equal the first one of the array. And then I'm just setting up another one here, another var reading equals controller dot get um, current reading. So if a buttons are currently pressed, um, this is what's going to happen from our switch. So case, so for example, if gamepad buttons dot a is pressed, I'm going to do a wait log. I'm going to write in here for our debug window, a has been pressed, so we know what's happening, and then I'm going to break out of it. Of course, this timer is going to have to have a sync up the top here for this to work, and let's take a look. So if I press A, as you can see now in the output, it now has A has been pressed, but it's printing quite a lot. So what I've done next is I've just decided to tell it, well, not every second or microsecond, if that's what it's called, or something like that, millisecond, I'm going to tell it for every actual second, if I press a button, then you can print it to the output window. And as you can see at 1, uh, at 1 10 p.m., a button has been pressed. So right now, physically, I'm actually pressing the A button on the controller and it's just printing this message here. So now what I want to actually do is I want to move the object around each time I press the A button. So what I can do is from my rec object that I created that's connected with my object class, I can say rec.move object and obviously I'm going to put the this.create graphics and then I'm using the rec dot x equals rec dot x plus 10 as well as the y axis so now each time I press the a button you can see that the object is slightly moving okay so it is moving a little bit however I would prefer it to move a lot faster than that so now when I press a you can see the object is moving and I'm going to do here plus 15 now just to make it move even quicker And then I will sell it here while, yeah, I'm going to take away now and put 10 there. The object is moving quite fast, and you can see in the output just before that it is reading the buttons of each on the press. So I'm just going to fast forward this bit. I'm going to link this up now for each of the buttons A, B, Y, and X. And I'm going to just quickly modify the position that it's going to or the direction that it's going to go into. Like I said before, um, if you did want to learn more about classes, uh, do let us know in the comment section and I can make a tutorial about a class. So right there we can see that B has been pressed, X has been pressed, Y has been pressed, B has been pressed, A has been pressed, Y, B and so forth and so forth. Just going around in, not circles, but we're going around in squares. So now I'm going to show you guys quickly is we can actually increase the size of our object because we have created the class and we can change the yeah, not the shape, but the size of itself. So instead of this, uh, the square being small, we can make it increase and decrease with the left and right shoulder bu buttons. 
I'm just going to fast forward this part because this video isn't about, like I said before, classes. It's about getting the controller to work. So if you do have any questions though about what I'm doing, do leave it in the comments section below and I can help you out. Each time now I press the left shoulder button, it will increase the size. So I've only got left shoulder set up. I'm going to now set up the right shoulder. I'm going to change our log message. And I'm going to put here negative 15. You could do negative 150 if you wanted to. It just, yeah, depends on what you'd like. But now we have the object moving around with the Xbox controller. Uh, and so forth. So yeah, I really hope this video has helped you guys out um, uh, If you do have any questions do leave them in the comment section below thumb the videos up subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye